Hi everyone, Nola here, back with another video. In this one, we'll be talking about some productivity tips that often aren't talked about, but that have tremendous value in terms of helping us to overcome barriers, reduce friction, and get rid of resistance when there are tasks that we would rather avoid doing or procrastinate on doing. The first tip that I wanna talk about is the power of micro bits. And this is something that I have put into practice more often because of a co-working group that I've been a part of. The first time that I really tried co-working virtually with other people was actually in 2020. Is that right? No. The first time that I tried co-working with other people was actually in the beginning of 2021. Is that right? Yes. I had taken a course called the Annual Review in 2021, and it's just thinking about the year that just finished, thinking about the year ahead, and that course was put on by Tiago Forte. And one of the people who was a part of that course, not teaching it, but was an attendee, a student similar to myself, was Ali Abdal. And then following that course, Ali has been working on a book, and so he put together some co-working times so that he could practice writing his book, and it was an opportunity for other people to just log on and co-work with him. And even though for me, the times of that co-working session was at like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. in the morning, it was such motivation to get up and do it. Something that I love about my co-working group is that when we get together, everyone goes around and shares what their first small next step is. And I wanna break it down even further. Not your first small next step, because even though we say small next step, sometimes we still keep that as something large. You wanna think about it in terms of micro bits. What is the absolute smallest version of the task that you can just get started with? And one day I said, oh, you know, I have to go into my email, find this email, and then I need to log into a system, add one of my direct reports in, blah, blah, blah. And they said, that's too much for a first step. They were like, it needs to be the smallest thing you can think of. And that is why I call it micro bits. So sometimes we may have tasks and sometimes we have big projects. And even though we may break that big project down into smaller tasks, it's really important to think about, especially when it's something you've been resisting, what is the absolute micro tiniest task? What is the micro bit that I can start with? And so in that same example that I gave earlier, my colleagues who I was co-working with said your first micro bit should be going into your email. Just opening up the email, that should be the first thing. Sometimes we may let the magnitude of our project scare us away from even getting started and really just try to break it down as much as you can. So that is the first tip, is to identify the micro bit and then let that propel you forward. The next tip is to think about what is your end goal with the task? Because oftentimes we're doing things and we're doing busy work and it may not even align with our scope of work or it may not align with the role that your manager has tasked you with. And so many times we have emails coming in, people wanting us to do things, but does that really align with what you're supposed to be doing? Does it really align with your role at your job or your scope of work that you're working towards? And so we really want to keep that in mind. Something that David Allen says that I really thought was such a great point was, we don't start playing a game when we don't know how to win that game or when we don't know the outcome of that game. We don't start playing golf not knowing where the holes are. And so we have to do the same thing for ourselves and our to-do list. Think about our end goal and is this project in alignment with what I've been tasked to do? Another thing is that when we say no to something, that helps us say yes to something else. So I know while think about your end goal and think about what is the outcome that you're working towards may sound like, well, that's obvious, but it's often uncomfortable to say no, and sometimes we don't really give that credit. But in order to say yes to what we really want to work towards, we have to say no to other things. And even though it's uncomfortable and we may feel bad, especially if we're saying no to a senior leader in our company or whether it's a family member, know that you have identified your priorities and what aligns with your values, and we really want to stick towards that. The last productivity tip is doing a brain dump, or I've also heard others call this a brain sweep. And so I mentioned earlier in the video that sometimes when we have tasks that are just lingering and we know we owe someone something, but we just haven't had the time or maybe we haven't wanted to prioritize getting that thing done, and it takes up all this space and we're constantly remembering, oh yeah, I have to do that. Oh yeah, I've gotta get back to John about that. And so the biggest thing that really helps me feel so much more calm and so much more on top of my priorities 
is just putting it all out on paper and just writing everything down and that's why it's called a brain dump. Anything that you've got on your list, especially when your list is up here, because even though our brains are great, they are not great to-do lists, write it down on paper, get it all down. You can make categories, you can say, okay, here are my work items, here are my personal items, here are the items for school. Just get it all down on paper and then once you have it all in front of you, you can see what you've committed to, what you've agreed to, and you can prioritize based on what's most important, what's most pressing, what matters most to you. Again, some just because someone has asked you to do it doesn't mean that you're the best person to do it. And I find that whenever I do a brain dump, it helps me tremendously feel more focused, more peace of mind, I'm not worrying, I'm not having like random pop-ups of ideas and to-dos that I haven't made progress on. Another thing is when we have these to-do items that keep popping up and are taking up space, a lot of times it's because we haven't made progress or we haven't recorded it somewhere. So whether that's a physical planner or whether you use OneNote, Evernote, Notion, whatever your task manager is, just capturing those items so that they won't continue to take up space. Another thing that David Allen said that I thought was so true was that the items that take up space most in our heads often correspond and have an inverse relationship with how much we've done. So when we have a project and we know that we didn't get back to that person or we haven't made forward movement, then it kind of takes up more mental space. And so I find that for me that's so often true and so making sure that I regularly do a brain dump and then transfer that to my to-do list really helps me stay on top of things. So I hope some of these tips will be helpful to you. I would love to hear what productivity tips you have. I'm always trying to do things better or more efficiently. I have a skincare video about how to prevent acne when we're wearing masks. And I also have another video on how to improve your sleep and why you're so tired right over here. So I'll link those and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.